So our next speaker is uh, Daniel. And uh, I'm not sure, but he's probably one of the most qualified people here. He is a PhD in physics. And he's been a trained data scientist. He's uh, working in Pachyderm IO as well as in Arden Labs. And uh, I think it's safe to say, Daniel, that you're living a dream. He's a vegetarian, and he's coming to India for the first time. He says, wow, I can finally get our mac and cheese. So Daniel, all yours. Great. Can you hear me? Awesome. Uh, seen some great speakers. Um, maybe give another round of applause for our speakers and organizers. Yeah, I'm having. Uh, a really great time here. Thank you all for the great questions and discussion. So today, I'm going to talk about Go and data science. Um, we had a great talk yesterday about machine learning. Um, today, I'm going to talk um, uh, a little bit more in, in, in that uh, area. But um, I'm going to start off by exploring a question. So um, I talk a lot about Go and data science. That's pretty much all I talk about. Um, and whether I'm talking to Python people, whether I'm talking to R, programmers, whether I'm talking to gophers, um, it pretty much always comes to one question. Um, and actually, two days ago when I was in a cab with uh, Francesc, um, this was the same question that came up. Okay. Can I really do all of this data science stuff with Go? So can I do machine learning and crunch data and produce results? Um, can I really do all that with Go? Um, you know, you don't hear much about it. Is it really possible? So today, I just want to set all the records straight. The answer is yes, OK? Um, and today, what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you why I'm passionate about Go for data science, why I love Go for data science. And I hope you guys have fun with this, this as well. Um, and, uh, and, and learn some things. So what I'm going to do is basically a demo, OK? So let's all imagine, let's imagine we're on a team, OK? Uh, we're maybe working at uh, some company that has some so sort of social network, and we've got a bunch of images coming into our system. And we want to see automatically what is the content of those images, and we're going to tag those images. And that way, we can do that automatically, and our users are going to get this great benefit, and we're going to get this great benefit because we own stock in the company, and the company's going to do great, and we're going to make tons of money. So, so anyone want to be on the team with me? Yeah? Anyone? OK, a few people. A few people are going to make millions with me. OK, so wouldn't it be great if we could do this with Go? Okay? Wouldn't it be great if we could bring in an image, and if we could have some sort of processing, let's call that a model, okay, that takes in that image and tells us what's in the image. Okay? So in data science, we talk a lot about these models. You hear a lot about them. You might have heard about like deep learning or neural network models. So we're going to be using one of those models. And we think you know, this is a good fit for our use case of, of classifying these images. And so we're going to use one of these neural network models. And this, this is a, a complicated model, but at the end of the day, again, we're just taking in this image data, and we're going to crunch it with that model and then output the content of that image. So let's see, let's see if we can do that. OK. Now first, we need, we need a model, OK? Um, so all of us are. Uh, good engineers, and we, we build on what other people have done before us, right? So why don't we not start from scratch? Because this image classification problem has been, it's worked on you know, year round by a bunch of really smart people, and we should just try to utilize some of what they've done, OK? So you can see here, um, you can actually find these models online. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go to this Berkeley repository. And they have a model okay, that we can gather, or that we can, um, we can download. Uh, and this model is just going to tell us what are the parameters of this function, this function that's going to take in our image, and then it's going to output our classification. So it turns out that this is 
a very complicated model, and there's a lot of parameters, but at the end of the day, this is what we're going to do, okay? So let's utilize this model. Now, this model comes, you know, in this kind of weird format, um, and there's some files here. So how, how as gophers, are we going to interact with this model? Well, let's kind of explore some possibilities. And there's a lot of possibilities out there for doing machine learning, but as, as members of our team, what we want is we want to be able to download this model, and we want to be able to run it locally without reaching out to a bunch of APIs or, or things like that. We want to be able to run this model locally, and then we also want to do something cool. We want to run this model uh, in an optimized way for machine learning specific hardware. So there's a lot of cool uh, machine learning specific processors out there. So we want to take advantage of that. So we have this cool model. We're going to run it on cool hardware. Okay. Well, it turns out that there's this uh, deep learning SDK from Intel. Okay. There's a couple pieces of this. The first piece it's pretty interesting. We can actually create these models with this tool. So that's, that's kind of fun. It has like a nice UI. But the part that we're going to be interested in today is this deployment tool. So this deployment tool that they've built, um, it's going to provide an interface for us um, to this model. So they provide, they provide a unified API to, to our model. OK, that's cool. And not only that, because you know, because they're in Intel, um, then they've kind of optimized this for their specific hardware, like these uh, Xeon Phi processors. And so this is this is pretty neat. If we can if we can do this with Go, wouldn't that wouldn't that be wouldn't that be pretty exciting? We could we could take this really cool model that the people at Berkeley had developed. We can uh, we can run it locally from our Go binary, and we can run it in a way that's optimized for these advanced processors, OK? So that's what we're going to do. Now let's go over here, and I'll show you. See. All right, so let's do this this way. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to import this package here, um, go for DS, DL infer. And what this is, is it's just a, it's a wrapper around this Intel deep learning um, SDK that gives us the same unified API to these models that they've, they've implemented um, on their side. Okay. Then I'm going to define, this is that, that model that I've, uh, that I've downloaded. Um, it's in XML format. Um, I'm going to run, uh, and, and I'm going to run this specific plugin that they have that's going to even further optimize, either even further optimize our Go binary for this uh, this architecture. Okay, and then I'm going to provide it some labels. Now we can actually look at that file. So again, again this file. Okay, there's there's a lot in this file. But at the end of the day, there's some layers of our model, and there's a bunch of parameters that define those layers. And so it's a very, very complicated function. But at the end of the day, it's just parameters that we can utilize in our, uh, in, in our program. All right. OK. Going back to the code here. So that's the. Uh, that's the file, and then our, our program is just going to do something really simple. And again, this is one of the reasons I love Go. We can do this very simple. We can load our model, or load our images. We can load our model. We can make an inference, and we can get our results. So it's as simple as that. All right. So now we've created. We've created this Go program that wraps around this deep learning, uh, mach uh, machine learning uh, uh, framework. Now let's see if it actually works on some sample images. Okay. So here's uh, 
Here's that same, that same program, okay? I'm just going to build that. Now we have that binary there. All right, and now to run this, uh, to run this, um, this inference, we're going to run our Go binary, and we're going to provide it with an image. And since we're since we're working on a social network, since we're getting a lot of images from users, um, we know certain things about our domain. And one of those things we know is that about 96.2 of image percent of percent of images on the internet are cats. So we know that we want we need to be able to figure out that an image of a cat is a cat, right? So let's try it out. So we parsed our model, that file, and cool. All right. So we have, we have some pretty good success. Um, we've got, thanks. So we've got, uh, we've got Egyptian cat, red fox, OK. Um, sim similar animal, I guess, but our top result is a cat. So I don't know, maybe you guys know what an Egyptian cat is. Um, it's pretty specific, but at least we got a cat, right? Cool. Well, let's try, let's try a couple other things. So this is the plane that I flew over here on. I'm going to fly back on tomorrow, uh, 15 hours or so. Um, so I'm very familiar with that plane. Let's see what, what it tells us. Ah, cool, airliner. Um, it's unfortunate that, I mean, the third result is a space shuttle. Uh, I, really, I really wish I would have come here on a space shuttle. That would have been a lot more fun. Um, and then finally, of course, we're at GopherCon. So as gophers, we're a team of gophers doing data science, right? So let's, uh, let's try to see if, um, if our machine is is up to the challenge of classifying a gopher. Okay. All right, so, well, not gopher exactly, right? But marmot, mongoose, meerkat, they're all gopher-like, right? So, you know, this isn't a perfect model. All data science models are imperfect in certain ways because we train them on certain types of data. But you know, we're not too far off. So this is an opportunity for us as a team to improve this model in the future. But you know, two out of three, we're pretty good. So, so let's say that we're, we're confident that our model, this binary, is going to work well for our use case. OK. Now, what we've built, we've tried it out locally, right? We've passed it around in the team, and we're pretty we're pretty um, comfortable with, with what it can do. Okay? But if it stays on our laptop, right, it can't create value within the company. Right? We have to be able to process images on scale. And we want to have the same behavior that we have here on our laptop. Right? Now, what would be really cool is a couple of things. Wouldn't it be cool? if we could take this same binary, the same simple binary that we have here, and deploy it to the cloud and run it across a large data set of images without modifying the binary at all. Yeah? And also, we've seen that we get images in, we produce results. We get images in and we produce results. Now, when we're processing thousands and thousands of images, Okay. We need to be able to understand what images in created certain results out. Another way of saying it is we need to have reproducibility and we need to have integrity of our application. And part of that is understanding what data came into our model and what data came out of our model for each set of results. Okay. So wouldn't it be cool if we could version the data coming into our model and coming out of our model in a similar way that we version code in Git. 
So we've already heard a great talk about Git this morning, and it, it powers you know, amazing software development. But as data scientists and as data analysts, that's not enough. Okay? We have to understand the input data and the output data to our processing to, in or, to be able to improve on our, on our model, to be able to reproduce results, to be able to debug. Again, we have to have a model that's deployed with integrity in a production environment. Okay? And we have to maintain that integrity. So this is where a project like Pachyderm comes in. Okay? Pachyderm is an open source project that provides data versioning and data processing at scale. Okay? So both of these two things that we really want to, to enable on, on our team. Okay? Um, and guess what? This project is completely written in Go. Okay? So no more talk of Go isn't great for data processing, right? This is a, a, an amazing uh, distributed processing framework entirely written in Go. Okay? And I like it so much that I decided to work with them. So that's my plug. <laughs> um, OK, so let's, uh, let's go over here. And what I have, remember, it doesn't do us any good if our, if our model just stays on our laptop, right? So depending on the Wi-Fi, hopefully it kicks in. <clears throat> in a second, what we're going to see, hopefully, is I've got a Kubernetes cluster running in Google Cloud, OK? A three-node cluster um, running in the cloud that we want to deploy our application to. All right, let's see here. Let's try different Wi-Fi. Here. Try that one. Yeah. Oh, there we go. We're good. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> you know, if we if we were using context like Frances said, then um, this would be a great use case for it. Okay. So we have this Kubernetes cluster running in Google Cloud. This is a real cluster. I created it a couple nights ago. Um, and all you need to know here really is that we're going to deploy here to Google Cloud, and we can see here that we've got Pachyderm running in this Kubernetes cluster. So this PACD, we've just deployed as a web service or an app in Kubernetes. And this is what we're going to talk to to be able to enable our data versioning and enable our data processing at scale. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to version our data. We have to version our data to be able to maintain the integrity of this processing. So similar to Git, you guys are all familiar with Git. The semantics here are going to be very similar to Git. Okay? And that's what we want. We don't want to learn a new, uh, um, a, a new semantics for this. Um, so what we can do is we can list out what data repositories we have uh -huh. in Pachyderm. Let's try one more time. I'm going to switch back. All right, cool. So Pachyderm, similar to Git, we're going to store our data in repositories, okay? Except these are going to be repositories of data, repositories of our data sets, okay? And we're going to be able to push our images into these repositories and understand what images we have, we're processing at any point in history, okay? So let's create a repository called images. Okay. Now, if we look at what repositories we have again, we have one data repository for our images, and we haven't put any data in it yet. So it's just empty. 
Now, what we're going to do is we're going to put some images in this repository, okay? So here we have similar images, gopher, um, cat, but we're going to add some more. We're going to add pug and volcano and some other things. And I'm just going to use a, uh, a shell script to um, iteratively put each of these files into Pachyderm, okay? Let's do that. To do. Um, so again, we're pushing these images to our data repository, to Pachyderm, and those images, as soon as they get into that repository, Pachyderm is versioning those images for us. Okay? Similar to how you would version code in Git. So hopefully, hopefully it holds out here. Fingers crossed. In the meantime, let me just uh, show you what some of these, these guys look like. There. All right, so now we're going to have laptop. We're going to have my favorite pug. All right. We've got Volcano, so some pretty varied images. All right, hopefully this, uh, this finishes here in a second. All right, let me, let me kill this. Try again. All right, so the Wi-Fi might not, uh, might not be coming through, but let me just give it one more try. Okay. All right. Looks like, looks like we're dead. But um, let me, uh, me kind of talk through this with you. So we've got our images in the images repo. And for any of you guys, we can definitely sit down out in the hallway. Maybe the Wi-Fi is better, and I'll, I'll run through this with you. But we get those images in the data repo. And then what we're going to do is we're going to tell Pachyderm, remember, we don't, we don't want to modify what we did locally to run in production, right? Ideally, we just like to run that same binary and not have to complicate it at all and just run it in production. So what we're going to do is tell Pachyderm about this binary. And we do this in a JSON spec. Now, this might look a little confusing. Um, don't worry about too many of the details. All you need to know is that we're telling Pachyderm that we're going to run a processing step called classification. And for that processing step, we want it to use this Docker image, which contains our Go binary, the same Go binary that we ran locally. And for each of the images in the images repo, Okay, we're going to run that same classification. Okay, so when I tell Pachyderm about this, okay, and I can just do that by create re create pipeline. Okay, when I do that, Pachyderm is going to look at this. It's going to say, "Oh, I have something that needs to process images from my images repo." And I've, I see that you've committed images to that images repo that haven't been processed yet. Okay? So I'm going to run what you told me to run on each of those images. So what we've done is we've taken that same binary that we ran locally. Okay? We've pushed it up to Google Cloud. And Pachyderm is allowing us to run that same thing with the same behavior that we ran locally in a distributed manner over as many images as we want. We could even tell Pachyderm to spin up a bunch of workers all running that same script 
to process images in parallel. So as a team, we've, we've, we've looked at our problem. You're going to say, we want to make millions of dollars by classifying images, right? And quickly, with Go, we were able to say, OK, I'm going to pull in this model that works really well. I'm going to run that on images. And we did that very simply. And then with Pachyderm, we were able to say, I'm going to take that same script, that same simple processing that ran locally, and I'm going to run it over in a distributed way over many images in, in a production cluster. Okay? And this is why I love Go for data science. We did this so simply, and the tooling like Pachyderm allows us to distribute that over production scale data without having to think about how my data is sharded or how to parallelize my processing. And I just think this is incredibly powerful, and um, that's why I love Go for data science. So here's some, here's some, uh, here's some conclusions and resources for you guys. Please reach out to me. As I said, I'm sorry about the Wi-Fi issues, but I'm very happy. I gave some demos of this um, yesterday to people. So grab me if you're interested particularly in this, and we'll sit down at a table, and we'll run it through. Um, it's pretty, it's pretty um, fun to see when this wor these workers start processing images. So um, come find me. There's a bunch of other links. There's a data science channel in Gopher Slack. Get on there and um, check out the Pachyderm stuff online. So thank you, guys. Thanks. Let's take a few questions. All right, we have one there. I'd recommend just stand up so that he can just see you there. Uh, oh, hi, nice uh, talk. Um, so you showed how to use uh, uh, Cafe Zoo uh, to uh, run a, a pre-computed model. Uh, how about contributing uh, to do that? You need to train a model with uh, large data sets. Uh, did you have any success in uh, training uh, a Cafe model? Yeah, so, um, so in this case, I leveraged the fact that um, someone had done it better than I probably could before me. And so that's what we did in this case. But there are definitely um, Go-based ways to do that sort of training that, that are very successful. So if you're interested in that, find me afterwards, and I'll, I'll point you to all those resources. So thank you. OK. okay. Uh, you, saw one more. you saw me uh, many images. Uh, those are Ah, yeah. Uh, those are small images. Uh, so if image is very large, like t uh, 1 GB images, so can I uh, distribute uh, it to multiple uh, machines? Yeah, so, so there's various ways to do this with Pachyderm. And actually, this is one of the great things. You can still keep your processing very simple and either um, have Pachyderm distribute on a file level or on a block level if you're, if you're partitioning file, large files that way. So and again, I can show you all those details, and, and it's in our docs as well. So. And yeah. one last question, please. Yeah. It to Kubernetes? Hello. Yeah. Is it tied to Kubernetes? Yeah, so Pachyderm um, runs on Kubernetes uh, as an app, like I showed you, in Kubernetes. And that's how we're able to leverage um, that easy orchestration of data distribution across a cluster um, with containers. So. Again, this Pachyderm, it's, it's kind of a reimagining of something like Hadoop, a distributed processing framework, but on modern architecture, we can leverage that power that Kubernetes gives us. Yeah. OK. Thank you, Daniel. Yeah. Thank you, guys.